Mound Magazine TV is presented by Traditional Bank, where our business is you. I'm Jeffrey Lyles. And I'm Angela Evans. And welcome to the May edition of Mound Magazine TV. On this show, we're going to learn a little bit about the upcoming First Friday Market, check out the Bark Park, and a few other events that are going on in Mount Sterling. here in downtown Mount Sterling and I'm joined with Tracy Pierce, director of Mount Sterling Tourism. Tracy, summer is just right around the corner. We have so many events planned for here in Mount Sterling. One of the very popular events we have is the first Friday market and the first one is just in a few weeks. Is that right? It absolutely is. The first Friday in June and then we also do it the first Friday in July, first Friday in August and first Friday in September. So we stretch it out all summer long. It's from 6 to 9 p.m. And right here on this stage, we'll have some wonderful live music. We have 80 vendors that will be set up selling a little bit of everything. There'll be great food, great art, great clothing, a little bit of everything, and you'll enjoy that very much. There's also another stage at the end of Maysville Road, and that stage will be a full band. We're Drums, guitars, the whole kit and caboodle. It'll be a great time. It always has been. The last four last year were very well attended, and it was a lot of fun. So we really hope you'll come out 6 to 9 p.m. every first Friday of the month, June, July, August, September. We definitely want to thank our presenting sponsor. All of our sponsors have been great, Angela. But White Peck and Carrington really did step up, and they are our presenting sponsors. So thank you to them, and thank you to everyone who's been so supportive. It's made this event grow by leaps and bounds. And you mentioned how many people came out last year, and it has grown a lot. A lot of a people do things for this yes. year, for all ages. All ages. We have a wonderful kids area, and we just, it's been growing. We even have our car show that normally we did a first Saturday car show of the month every month, but they have decided to join with the first Friday, and so we will also have a huge car show going on at the same time as first Friday. There's a lot to take in. 6 to 9 p.m., you'll need the 6 to 9 p.m. to be able to catch it all. And come early. The Art Center is going to have their first Friday art opening and reception, and that's always on the first Friday of the month as well, but that's year-round. But during the summer months, you can come down early, take in the art show at 4, come on down here at 6. That's a full night of entertainment for you. <laughs> and best of all, guess what? It's free. <laughs> free to get in. We just want everyone to enjoy Mount Sterling, and so we invite you to come. We're here with author Mickey Clark, whose recently published book, Don't Ask Me to Leave, uses Mount Sterling in many ways as part of its setting. Welcome, Mickey, and tell us a little bit about the book. Uh, Don't Ask Me to Leave is actually a modern-day adaptation of the story of Ruth and Naomi from the Bible. Um, I got the idea for my wedding vows. My husband and I were married here in Mount Sterling, and we used the Don't Ask Me to Leave passage. Um, so those words have always really been very special to me, really resonated with me. Was Mount Sterling important to be part of the book to you? It was. Uh, I'm an English teacher, and one of the things that I always tell my students is you should write what you know. And at Mount Sterling is where I spent my formative years, so it's always, you know, had a special place to me. And I wanted readers to be able to see the town and experience it the same way that I did when I was growing up. So did you have to do any research at all? Uh, very little. Uh, I did have to do a little bit of research on the uh, Indian mounds, which mm -hmm. are mentioned in the book. Um, because honestly, I didn't, I didn't know much about gate skill. I didn't even know it was there. I thought it was just a car parts <laughs> store. So uh, that was a surprise to me. Um, but honestly, most of it were things that I just remembered, you know, from being a child in Montgomery County. Now, you're a full-time English teacher. Yes, what grade do you teach? I teach sophomore English. Okay. And so how did, long did it take you to write the book, and, and how did you find time to do it? Because you also are a mother, are you not? I am a mother. I have three very beautiful children. Um, they range in age from 8 to 11, and so I have about 10 minutes of free time a year. Um, you have to get up very early in the morning to write when you have small children. I'm getting very good at writing at 4.30 in the morning. So you said, thankfully, a publisher liked it. Um, was it hard to get it published? Uh, I was very blessed. Uh, I think I had a much easier experience than most people can say. So are you working on something else? I am. Um, actually, the project that I'm working on now is another modern-day adaptation of a biblical story. Um, I'm doing the story of David and Bathsheba uh, this time around. Uh, it's tentatively called The Soldier's Wife. Now we're going to hear an excerpt from Don't Ask Me to Leave. 
and you can see the cover of the book so you can kind of get an idea of the people that are the main characters in the book at least as we start and I think a lot of our viewers will be familiar with some of the areas we're going to hear about. We're going to cross the street and take a look at the Joseph Simpson cabin. They jogged across the intersection and Rachel searched for the cabin. Where is it? I see plenty of houses, but those aren't anywhere near that old. Well, they're old enough. You'd be surprised how many of the homes in this district are over a hundred years old. He put a hand on her shoulder, angling her body. It's back that way, behind the bank. Come on. Rachel followed as he crossed the parking lot. Sure enough, nestled between some trees stood a little log cabin that couldn't have been bigger than 16 feet square. The boards were faded and the wooden door weathered, but she could see signs of obvious care for the structure's maintenance. Well, after hearing that, Mickey, I'm sure there's people who are going to want to buy the book. So where can they buy it? It's available from most of the major outlets. For example, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. It's also available in an ebook format. Well, thanks for being here, Mickey. Thank you for having me. Welcome, and now we're here at Sunroom Gifts, Quilts, and Fabric. I'm joined with Susan Charles, who is the owner. Susan, thanks for being with us today. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, and, to have you. and tell us a little bit about your store here. Well, I opened on February the 11th. Uh, we do quilting for people, long arm quilting. Uh, we make t-shirt quilts. We make special quilts upon request. Um, we do baby quilts, uh, we do classes, I have um, fabrics and notions, thread, we have special gifts already made up, so if you're not a quilter you can stop in and pick up something that's already made. Um, and how did you guys get the idea to start this store? It's something I've kind of always wanted to do and I just didn't have the opportunity, so the opportunity came up and I just went to work. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a quilter. What made you get into quilting? Yes, I have probably been quilting for about 15 years. Uh, Jim and Jesse Boyd are the ones that got me into quilting. I started, um, I've always sewn, but I had never made a quilt. And then I got with them and they got me quilting and it was just like I was hooked. <laughs> and you're teaching it get enough of it. <laughs> You're teaching others, others that now too. Today we're having a class on a yellow brick road. Uh, it's a lap size quilt. Some of the ladies in here that are taking the class have never sewn or have very little sewing. So we're just, they're all learning together. Some of them have been sewing for a while. So um, we started this morning at 10 and we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> and you showed me how, it started teaching me some how to yes. quilt as well. We had a lot of fun. And Susan, is quilting easy? You started showing me here. Here's some of the, the handiwork that we did earlier that was really easy. Tell us a little bit about who can come to your classes and what you do here. <laughs> Anybody can take these classes. If you've sewn before, if you've never sewn before, come on in and we'll learn together. Um, just let me know what you want to take a class on and we can get it scheduled and we can do one-on-one -on -one, or we can have five or six in here at one time. And Susan, if someone wants to learn how to quilt or come be a part of your classes, how do they do that? How do they get in touch with you? Sure, they can stop by the shop. Um, we're open Tuesday through Thursday from four to seven, Fridays from 11 to seven and Saturdays 10 to five. We're located at 24 East Main Street in Mount Sterling, Kentucky and they can go to our Facebook page, which is Sunroom Gifts, all one word. Um, but they can stop by there and we'll have our classes listed. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us and, and teaching me how to, how to quilt. <laughs> and now we're gonna go look at some dresses and some other items at prom.
Montgomery High School prom where teenagers are lined up with cars. What do you guys have here tonight? A car? Oh, it's a yeah, Mercedes 300. Yeah. Whose car is this? This is my car. And what is this? This is a 2016 Jeep Sahara. And we're almost at the end of the line here at the Montgomery County prom entrance. And thank you guys for stopping and talking to us. And what are your names? I'm Callaway Cybers. I'm Julian Williams. And what kind of car do you have here tonight? Uh, just a Lexus. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. <laughs> Good air Lexus. conditioning, though. <laughs> Good air conditioning is uh, top quality on this kind of evening. Is that something you need for prom tonight? Yes, absolutely. You gotta show up looking fresh. And why do you guys want to come and get in this line and have this big entrance here at the prom? <laughs> uh, I'd say the entrance is maybe half of the event. Uh, making a quality appearance is definitely a significant part of showing up and being cool. And that's what high school is all about, I suppose. So. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for talking with us. We'll let thank you get you. back, back in so you can get inside thank and get you. those dance moves. Yes. And now that we've looked at all these cars, we're going to go look at some more cars that maybe you could purchase at Dutch's. <laughs> We just saw a lot of really nice cars at prom, and now we're here with some really nice cars. We're at Dutch's Chevy and Ford. We're here with David, and David, tell us about this car. This is a really nice new car right here. Absolutely, the new 2018 Equinox, totally restyled from top to bottom. Uh, besides the F-150 and the Silverado, this is the best seller that we have. Uh, smaller SUV, made for families, lots of storage, uh, really de desirable product. Well, you told us it's for families and have lost stores, but why don't you actually show us? Absolutely. About? Young man, slide in here. Put your seat belt on and look how much knee room that gentleman has. Had his phone stored in the back pocket, very handy. It's that seat is, yeah, and that seat is all the way back. So look how much knee room, lots of Lots of handy room back there. And now what kind of stuff does this have for mom and dad? Uh, large big screen radio, all wheel drive or front wheel drive, um, power seats. Uh, so it's, it's, it's usable for country road driving or interstate driving. Two engines to choose from, great gas mileage, just a great product. And you guys have a lot of other vehicles here to choose from Absolutely, well. yes we do. So how can people get a hold of you or look to see what you have here? Please go to DutchesAuto.com on the web to view new Fords, new Chevys, and all of our used inventory. All right, and you guys are also a part of the Chamber of Commerce here. At Absolutely, County. glad to be a part of it. And now we're going to go talk about one of the Chamber of Commerce's very popular programs, Leadership Montgomery County. You have the vision. We help make it happen. It wasn't an easy decision to expand my practice but I had an amazing partner that helped me move heaven and earth to get it done, making it easier to build my facilities and my team while managing our growth. Traditional Bank is always there to lend a hand to help local businesses succeed. Now that it's been a success, I have another tough decision to make. We handle all kinds of business loans. Red or blue? And personal ones too. Traditional Bank. Hi, I'm back here in downtown Mount Sterling and I'm here with one of our vendors from the First Friday Market that we have every first Friday of the month, June, July, August, September. Corey Dietrich is here with me and she's with Southern Queens. And Corey, you brought some of the cutest things for us to take a look at and these are just an example of some of the things you'll be able to buy at the First Friday Market so you want to make sure you come. We want to talk about a few of the things we have with us. I am holding this beautiful dress. This is a cute little spaghetti strap dress. It's very simple and easy. You just add a flash of necklace with it. Perfect for an evening out. Absolutely. She Look also at this. has the seersucker pinched waist dress with the matching men's tie as well as the bow tie. And just put a pop of color with it. What I have here is we also carry sizes from small to 3X. This here is a plus size. We've added a beautiful necklace with it. Perfect with some leggings and great for the summer. Here's a pair of our leggings. They're so soft and buttery feeling. These are two for 15. We also carry solid colors. 
So we have any color that you might need to coordinate with your outfit. We also have two different styles of dress coming out this year. And as you notice, the crisscross pattern up on the chest makes it nice where you don't even have to have a necklace. That, that dress nice. speaks for itself. And next we also have that. this. <laughs> this is a beautiful colored sleeveless dress. We've matched it with a necklace. You can wear this with or without leggings. It's beautiful for a night out. Absolutely. And finally, one of our amazing new outfits, which is coming back in style, is our jumper. It's a one-piece jumper. We match it with this beautiful silver necklace. Mm -hmm. If you look in the back, it has a keyhole back. And it also has pockets. So, you know, the First Friday, this is an example of what a, some of us ladies can find at First Friday. But we have 80 vendors at First Friday, and it's a good mixture, isn't it? It is. It is. And, of course, you, we always have food, as you can imagine. We also have live music, two live stages all night long. And so we really are excited, and we look forward to having you all at First Friday Market in downtown Mount Sterling. Coming soon, June, July, August, September, the first Friday of the month. Here at the Chamber of Commerce office with Sandy Romanesco, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce and Industrial Authority, and Brandon Sturgill, who is the incoming chair of Leadership Montgomery County. And we're going to start by talking about the Leadership Montgomery County program. Brandon, tell us a little bit about what participants would expect from this program. Uh, the program is, is a, about a nine-month program that we start at the end of July with a mandatory retreat uh, weekend retreat where uh, participants get to know each other and uh, really focus on a class project they're required to do. Uh, after that, we start monthly sessions uh, at the beginning in September through April. Uh, we meet on the second Thursday of the month uh, and we visit local uh, businesses and organizations. And to delve more into in the, the community, community yeah. uh, at local government, and really learn the inner workings um, of how things operate in the community. So this would give a chance for participants who don't normally get to go to these institutions to actually see what they do. Yes, and learn how how ideas you know really come into play and become change in the community, and how they can get involved. And if you had someone who's interested in this program, how would they go about getting to apply or be nominated to be a participant? Uh, they can discuss with their employer uh, and also uh, contact the local chamber office uh, as well as the Montgomery County Extension office uh, and also the uh, Leadership Montgomery County Facebook page. Great. And Sandy, there's a milestone coming up for the program now? Yes, the Chamber's been involved in, the Chamber actually initiated this program 25 years ago. So this is the 25th year for the Leadership Montgomery County program. And I would assume that means that there are alumni from the program that are all over the area working now? Absolutely. There's over 330 alumni in the pro, from the program. And some have moved on and gone on to other communities or or you know, moved away due to family or job obligations. And a lot of them are still here in the community being, getting more involved, you know, being involved more with the chamber, or being involved with city council, or being involved in other organizations that are, that are active and, and help our community. Okay. So we're going to talk to a couple of the participants in the program, but from what you've said, it sounds like that this isn't a program that just benefits the participants, but that it's also a benefit for the business community and really the community as a whole. It is. It, it, it helps people understand, you know, seek first to understand. You know, people are quick to judge uh, a decision by a city council or by a fiscal court, but there may be reasons that they do that and they get behind the scenes and learn how they make these decisions and what causes and cause and effect of, of what happens. And, you know, I host Industry and Infrastructure Day, and so they learn why industry is so important and jobs are so important to our community. Great. Well, we're going to visit one of the industries that the group tours in just a little bit, but now we're going to first talk to a couple participants in the program to find out about their experience. Okay, we're here with two participants of Leadership Montgomery County, Cassie Prather and Brady Schultz, and we're going to ask them a few questions about their experiences. So to start with, uh, Brady, tell us some of your experiences with the program. I tell you, one of the things that I was impressed with most was the fact that we got to see so many things that I've driven by for 20 years of, of, of living here and, and had no idea that what went on. We have an incredible industrial park out here, but I had no idea what really 
those factories build. And you go in and you meet the people that are working there, and then you get to see the pictures of all the cars that all the parts go on. It was it was amazing. We learned a, a, an awful lot. Well, and you mentioned the 20 year part. I know there is some perception that the program is more for people who are new to the community or new to their jobs. But if you've been involved in the community for 20 years, you can still learn something. So Cassie, tell us about that, what you might learn, even if you've been involved in the community for a while. Lived here all of my life, uh, worked here for 10 years. Uh, but my motto is never stop learning. And even though I've lived here all of my life, I learned things throughout leadership that I didn't know about Mount Sterling and Montgomery County. Okay, and we know everyone is busy these days, whether with work, family. So tell us why this would be worth your time to participate in this program. As a wife and a mother of five and full-time employee, I'm pretty busy, but I can tell you that there was not a second of this program that was not worth it in, in the long run. You know, a day, a month is really not that much to invest in the, your future as a leader. And we're here at one of the locations visited by Leadership Montgomery County, KDMK. With us is Chris Conley, Director of Operations, and Paul Daniel, who's Production Engineering Manager. And to get us started, Chris, tell us what type of products are made here at KDMK? Well, here at KDMK, we make what we call a SIFS module, which is a simplified integrated fuel system, and also an ORVR valve, so it's an onboard refueling vapor recovery valve. How would those be used um, on a vehicle, for example? So the SIFS module itself is kind of like the heartbeat of the vehicle. So it, it gets mounted into the fuel tank, and uh, as we mount that into the fuel tank, then it supplies fuel from your fuel tank to your to your rail, to the engine rail, right, that uh, puts the gas into the engine, so to speak. Okay. We know that manufacturing is a high-tech industry now, so tell us some of the state-of-the-art processes and groundbreaking technology that's in use right here in Mount Sterling. There's a lot of advancements recently with vision systems that integrate with the processes and the robots. So it's one of a how to reduce labor that goes into placing components into a machine and knowing the orientation of the parts. So the cameras can actually take pictures of that and then pick up the orientation so they can actually shift their position to pick up parts in any, any orientation. So it's a very big advancement for us to reduce labor and stay you know, within a good market. So we've heard that you've grown significantly here. Tell us why you think Mount Sterling is a good place to not only operate, but also to grow and expand. So for uh, KDMK, our local community has been a big plus uh, for our effort in, in growing our business. Uh, we have a, a strategic workforce. Uh, residentially, most of our people live in the community. And uh, KCTS has been a big influence to help uh, create a more skilled labor for our, uh, our manufacturing operation as well. So we know that KDMK is the second largest employer in Montgomery County. How many people work here now? So right now we have currently about 820 people that is in our uh, facility at the time. And when you first started, how many employees did you have? We, when we first started, we only had about 50 employees uh, to start out with back in 2003, but now it's uh, grown to 820 employees. And those employees, how many of them come from the region here? Uh, from here, between 90 to 95 percent is in our local region. Uh, so uh, very excited, uh, excited that we can do that for our, for our community and then provide that uh, type of atmosphere for our local uh, staff and members. Okay, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Paul. And now we're going to check back in with Angela to talk a little bit more about events happening downtown. Now we're here with Tanya Witt, who is the Regional Program Manager for the Big Brothers Big Sisters Program of the Bluegrass. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and I understand you guys have Bowl for Kids Sake, which was a really big program last year. How successful was that? Um, last year, um, we barely missed our goal of $30,000, and so this year we really uh, focused more effort and input on that. And um, I'm proud to say that we had 38 teams that were registered. We had about 150 bowlers that participated, um, and we exceeded that $30,000 um, goal mark that we set. And for that $30,000, where does that money go? Um, that money will go right back into the community of Montgomery County. It allows us to uh, increase our matches, um, make more matches, allow one-on-one -on -one relationships with uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and their littles. 
And Tanya, I know you guys have a lot of big brothers, big sisters, but you're always looking for more. So who can be a big brother, big sister? Well, our current program, um, we have a high school bigs program where juniors and seniors service all three of our elementary schools and they meet at the school one hour per week. Um, we also have community volunteers that are beyond the high school um, age range that meet with their uh, little outside of school. They're able to do activities and events. Um, really our age range starts at a junior in high school if you want to become a big and really the sky's the limit to anyone who is willing to participate. All right, well, thank you for talking with us. And now we are gonna go speak to one of the big brothers. Now we're here with Chris Williams. Chris, thank you for joining us. You participated in the Bowl for Kids Sake last year. Why did you wanna do that? Well, last year we had our um, luncheon with uh, Tanya and the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. Um, working with Walmart, we uh, sponsored some of the uh, lanes and uh, she asked for sponsors to come out and uh, be a part of that team. So, um, Went to the luncheon and uh, had a great time at the luncheon and she spoke about, you know, the community and um, uh, how mentorship is, uh, is needed in, in, that, in this community. And what kind of positive influence has it had both on you and your little brother? Well, last year, uh, Curtis wasn't uh, a great student last year, but this year he's actually on our honor roll. And Chris, for people who are watching who are thinking about becoming a big brother or big sister, what do you want to say to them or recommend to them? Well, it uh, will enrich your community. It will uh, enhance your life by uh, having someone to uh, uh, talk to, um, having a little brother or a little sister that will uh, change their life and um, help them be a better part of the community also. Well, Chris, thank you for joining us and talking about your experience as a big brother. And we're here at the Pribble Bark Park with Kelsey Williams, who's the events coordinator for Parks and Recreation. And Kelsey, tell us how the Bark Park came to be. Um, Parks and Recreation got with Love of Paws here in town and decided that we needed a place where people can come and bring their dogs. And there are two different areas here. So there's an area for smaller dogs like Walter, and then there's an area for larger dogs too. Yes, absolutely. The smaller dogs are 25 pounds and under right here, and then the larger dogs go on the other side. And we know that people come to town to visit on their way, maybe to go hiking in the gorge, so they stop here and have lunch. This seems like a great place to bring the dogs and let them get some exercise on the way. Yeah, absolutely. Love of Pulse is working on putting benches out here, and until then, just bring your blanket and let your pup run. Great. Okay, well, thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Tracy, thanks for joining us again. And you talked about First Friday, but remind us again how people can come and find out more information. First Friday is one of the many events we have in Mount Sterling. Really, the best way for finding out information about all the things going on in Mount Sterling is on our website, mountsterlingtourism.com. All right, well, thanks for letting us know. We hope everyone will come out and see us here for First Friday in Mount Sterling. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mount Magazine TV. And we hope you will come and visit us here in Mount Sterling. And until then, we'll see you for the next edition in June. Mound Magazine TV is presented by Traditional Bank, where our business is you.